It's time for Boots and Armchairs. A Treasure Hunters podcast. I'm going on an adventure! It's another Bobby Dazzler! A real life buried treasure. One of the most famous uncracked codes of all time. Let's go find the treasure! Hello and welcome back to Boots and Armchairs. A Treasure Hunters podcast. We are your hosts, Deidre and Dustin White. Wow, it's been crazy. Yep. Can can you say crazy? Crazy. (laughs) It's been kind of insane. We were on national TV. What? What? Just in case you didn't hear or listen to the last episode that we had put out or... You know. Or lived under a rock, right? (laughs) (laughs) You're so funny. Yeah. Well, we were on Expedition Unknown, and it was awesome. Yeah, that was back on, well, it aired on October 2nd. It feels like I'm just kind of coming back up for air. What about you? I haven't come back up for air yet. I have been bombarded with messages from people, and it is awesome. Keep them coming. (laughs) Messages, the size of our group dedicated to The Secret has more than doubled in size now. Yep, it has swelled. We have, like, I did the math yesterday, and between our group for The Secret, the Secret Facebook page that we run, and we have a friend that has a a Twitter account dedicated to The Secret that has over 2,000 people. Anyway, you add them all up, we have like 8,000 people that are following us, and that's awesome yeah they're actively engaged ready to find these things yeah so let's go find them right yeah i'm excited well we have a cool guest on today that is a seeker of the secret Mm-hmm. his name is koi lothrop you might recognize that name he was kind of on expedition unknown with us i'm excited to sit down kind of have that conversation with him about his experience our experience and and talk through all of that real side note though real quick oak island yeah it's coming, coming back. back real soon okay who likes oak island Raise your hands. Me. Oh, wait. We, this is audio. My yep. bad. Yeah, sorry. Can't, it's not can't a see your hands. But if you're an Oak Island fan like us, November 5th is right around the corner for brand new episodes. Mm-hmm. And there's actually this Oak Island Facebook group that has the first almost 10 minutes of the first episode yes. on there. Like the guy, someone from the History Channel posted it on the Facebook group. And that's. Kind it, of amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was really it was really exciting, really great to see. Also, each week they're doing the top 25. Leading up to the premiere of the seventh season. Yes. Last week they did a top 25 finds. Yes. And that was fun to watch. It's mm-hmm. always good to see the gang doing their thing. There were some older finds. There were some more recent finds. There were... Some to be debated finds. Yeah, like some things were that they considered a top find. Okay, I mean... It was a good find, but there's things that are on the bottom of the list that should be at the top of the list. It's just some things didn't compute, hey, but... It's all a matter of opinion. It is a matter of opinion. And if you want to hear our opinion, we actually did about, what, an hour live mm-hmm. stream of a, a kind of a recap of that top 25 finds. Just look up Could It Be, an Oak Island podcast on Facebook, and there is a video there of us chatting about it, right? Yep. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to get the audio from that uploaded and shared with everybody, too. So you've got it in your regular feed. Pod- podcast form too yes yeah also while we're talking about live streams right after the expedition unknown episode aired what did we do well a live stream (laughs) we did it through our group dedicated to the secret on facebook and i think we did about an hour and a half live stream that first night Mm -hmm. and then almost an hour and a half the second day as well so it was like almost three hours of us chatting about being on the show and just all sorts of other crazy Mm -hmm. things answering questions uh because it is a tv show you know you can only get so much in there and there's a lot of information people had some questions about our theory which was really fun yeah yeah well another cool thing we had happen is we wrote this article right this article is explanation step by step of about every single little detail about our theory using the shadows to find these treasures, right? Uh, you go to Mysterious Writings, find our article. It says, uh, The Secret of the Secret by Deidre and Dustin White. Yep. And the article has a picture of Josh Gates holding up a cask. So look for that. It's a lot of fun. It gives you about 95% 
of our theory that you didn't see on TV because they just, Deidre said, they just don't have time to showcase every single little mm -hmm. thing, unfortunately. But it's there for you, so go check it out. Yep. And it will give you... Explain our reasoning. Behind everything. And I, I think we have good reasons to believe what we believe, but it's a theory, just like everybody else's ideas. Until something's pulled out of the ground, you got a good idea, right? Yep, let's try to pull something out of the ground. Why don't we talk to this other guy that tried to pull something out of the ground recently? Yes, we need to get Koi. Koi, how you doing? Hey guys, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks for carving time out of your schedule to talk with us. I feel honored. We're all on kind of national TV together, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a kind of a once in a lifetime experience. Well, hopefully there'll be more of that in our future, maybe. But yeah, <laughs> it was it was a pretty cool experience. Uh, just really an honor to to be able to do it and. Just all of it. It was, it was a really good time. It was really good stuff. 100%, man. It was the experience of a lifetime. So um, we have a bunch of questions for you. We'd like to just chat with you about the experience, chat with you about what other things you might be up to with in regards to treasure hunting. So we'll just start here. Uh, well, congrats for being on the show. Uh, what was your favorite part about being in Charleston with Josh Gates? Uh, well, you know, for me, it's just kind of the, like the boots on the ground part of it. You mm -hmm. know, it's like really... Being there and, and you do so much research, you know, where you're looking you know, at the book and at the poem and you're looking around online and you're spending all this time in like Google Maps. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's all this Internet based, you know, part of it as you're trying to figure things out. But, you know, to be there really in the park and really seeing the monuments and really seeing the distances, you know, that are play at that are at play, uh, all of that is it's, to me, that's the coolest part is actually being there and it kind of becomes a reality all of a sudden. And it's also kind of the difficult part because <laughs> nothing looks like Google Maps. You know, it's, <laughs> you're right. not looking from a bird's eye view, you're, you're literally there. So that also kind of becomes that difficult part of it. But, uh, you know, it's it's the excitement of it. And, and to me, that's kind of the, the favorite part. I, I enjoy all the research and sleuthing, but I really like to be on the ground doing it and have that excitement of, you know, here we go. You know, mm -hmm. are we going to do it? You know, so that's, that was my favorite part, just being there. Yeah, well, it's a beautiful city. And that park looked, you know, I, I've done some studying in that park and Deidre has as well. And, man, I want to go there so bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It, it, well, it uh, looks beautiful. Yeah, I know you and... guys went to San Francisco. How did, what was that like for you guys? Oh. Well, of course, the experience of a lifetime, nothing like it. I mean, it was pretty super awesome. We've been there before, so mm -hmm. that was a little bit different than probably your experience. But mm -hmm. it, with cameras, like, it was pretty crazy, Ooh. right? It was, it was not your typical uh, treasure hunting experience, unless you're, you know, Josh, Josh Gates. Gates, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But... Yeah, same thing. It is. It's hard to to not think about the cameras. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially for me. I I do not like to be in front of a camera. It's like a a life motto of mine. <laughs> Excuse me. To, Failed to always be behind the camera <laughs> instead of in front of it. And uh... so yeah, that was something to try to to get over. You know, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, and so, yeah, it's it's tough. I, I hear what you're saying. I, I warned him. I said, I am no actor. I am no actor. I'll be the most wooden guy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I think it shows yeah. on the show. But uh, but yeah, I mean, that's not you know my wheelhouse. I'm not an actor. I'm a treasure hunter. And so yeah. I feel like I did the treasure hunting part pretty good. It definitely wasn't wasn't scripted. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny, man. Yeah. Um... Super smart guy, though. Yeah, he was he was smart. He was cool. He knows a lot about the secret. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He he's definitely done his research and uh, you know knew all kinds of information. You know, so he, he's definitely a brilliant guy who who literally does the research. And not only that, he you know he had that whole production, the direction of it, the mm -hmm. you know managing all those people, everything. That's him you know, coming up with all that on the fly, mm -hmm. I can't imagine, you know, all the pressure and the, the creative demand of that. So I was really mm -hmm. impressed with him. Mm -hmm. uh, that took a lot of effort uh, to do that kind of work. And he does it very well. Yes. Yes, he does. And I think he kind of does it every day, you know, like yeah, every I, day. I, I think they, they don't come home very much. <laughs> you know, they're all around the world all the time doing mm -hmm. just this crazy stuff. I think they, you know, do like anywhere between 12 and 16 hour days, you know, during the shooting or whatever it is, that's just insanity. Mm -hmm. But 
Mm-hmm. I'm glad they do it because it's an entertaining show. I've never missed an episode. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah, it really is a good show. A lot of fun. A reason that you were picked to be on the show is because you know, they said it you know, right when they introduce you. you. You and your family won a big national treasure hunt, Breakfast Tea and Bourbon. Mm-hmm. You know, what? Uh, winning that treasure hunt must have been one of the craziest moments of your life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's the most surreal moment <laughs> of my life. You know, it, uh, I mean, that was kind of the... I've always kind of been involved in, in treasure hunting or trying to crack codes or, you know, puzzles and things like that. I, I'm not a guy who watches television that often. I, in my free time, I end up doing those kinds of things. It, it's how I keep my brain engaged. And mm-hmm. for Breakfast Tea and Bourbon, you know, that was kind of the, the really the first big substantial, you know, win. Uh, and so, I mean, it's a life-changing amount of money. Yeah. Not to mention, you know, there was, you know, 5000 on top of that that went to charity, mm-hmm. uh, which is, is really thanks to Pete. People will credit me with that, but I mean, he allocated the money for charity. I just kind of picked the charity. Yeah. yeah. And so that's really credit to him. And then, you know, there was a hundred bottles of wine from Lido Bay. Uh, so <laughs> it was a huge prize. Yeah. And to find that, you know, yeah, it was totally a surreal moment. I mean, I was beside myself and, and I'm not someone who like uses curse words or anything like that, but I was cussing like a mad fool, <laughs> you know, when I found that thing and I was really embarrassed of my behavior that that came out of me, but I was just, yeah, it was, I mean, I was that out of my mind uh, when we uncovered that. And then it was immediately like, we've got to get off this mountain. <laughs> you know, like someone was going <laughs> to right? you know, hijack us and take it from, it was that, that flute was that valuable, you That's know, at crazy. that point. Uh, and it came at a time in our lives where we just really needed it. You know, we were covered up in you know medical debt and stuff, and mm-hmm. we just really needed that money. And so, you know, it was just a really great thing to happen to us at exactly the right time. Yeah, fifty thousand dollars is just a whole ton of money. I I fully expected to win that myself. He did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. So that that hunt launched on February eighth, two thousand seventeen, at five oh eight p.m. Five oh eight. Yeah. yeah, so 5.08 p.m. That, and that was a clue. Or mm-hmm. actually, the whole clue was 5.08 p.m. Central. Central Standard Time, right? Mm-hmm. And so, That's right. You know, I didn't pick up on that clue. I thought the 5.08 was something else. <laughs> <laughs> but Deidre and I, that was the, real, the first real um, treasure hunt that we really dug into together. Like, together, we had yeah. just been introduced to The Secret just prior to mm-hmm. Breakfast Team Bourbon, but really jumped into Breakfast Team Bourbon together, and she... She found something in Pennsylvania that I was like, that's it. We got to go. And she put me on a plane and just sent me to, out to Washington, D.C. I drove into Pennsylvania. I looked for like, I, I went to, I went and looked in the state park for, I think, about 15 hours a day for two days. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Wow. I, looked, I looked everywhere. I looked under every single thing there. And obviously, I didn't find it because it was in Arkansas. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hot Springs yeah. National Park. Yeah. yeah. And Hot Springs. But you're brilliant because literally, you know, I figure I, I figured out it was in Pennsylvania uh, by the end of February. And you didn't even get into the, that hunt until when? Uh, it was like uh, we found it in, I think, July 14th. And it was a couple of weeks before that. So early July. I guess. And, uh, you know, I'd heard about the book from Mike Cowling or Calazar's YouTube Mm -hmm. channel. And he said, Hey man, you should take a look at this. And I was just, I emailed him and said, Hey, I really like your channel. You know, this is a lot Mm -hmm. of fun. You do a great job and keep doing what you're doing. And, you know, as a thank you, he said, Hey, you should look at this. This, Cause I think he believed it was in new Orleans at the time Mm -hmm. or hidden in new Orleans. And he said, I think this is nearby. You should look into it. And I went, yeah, okay, I'll do that. You know, and I got the book I ordered off Amazon, got the book. And, you know, five days later, I felt like I knew where it was, you know, and the family and I went out there, everything lined up, the tree eating the boulder, Mm -hmm. all the paces. I mean, everything in the book was there. And so we, (laughs) we knew we were kind of in the right place. And I I knew before we went that those things were there because I was watching GoPro videos of hikers that were doing those same trails. And so I knew, I mean, I could see the landmarks and I knew. So that convinced us to to go. And then we saw it for ourselves. And But we missed it on the first attempt. There was a, a, a piece of the puzzle, you know, that we weren't applying. And so we actually missed it with the kids. And then we kind of came back and spent a few more days kind of looking it over again. And then I discovered that missing piece. 
I said, that's, that's got to be it, you know. Uh, and so we went back that weekend and we almost weren't going to go. Uh, we were <laughs> in such a bad financial position that going, we couldn't afford to go again. It was mm-hmm. like done. And then, you know, I woke up that morning and I had this, if you've read the book, a, mm-hmm. a law of attraction type moment uh, where I was laying in bed and it was like, I'm going to find it like today. I'm going to find it today. You know, we need to go. Uh, mm-hmm. And so I got up and I said, Amy, we need to go. We're going to find it if we go. And she said, okay. So we charged it, the hotel room and everything. We went up uh, and in two minutes of arriving, we had uncovered the flute. Uh, we went right to it. Uh, and wow. so it was just that bit of, of missing information. It was just a compass bearing from a, the correct stone. Everyone had gone to the wrong stone. And it really came down to a left turn instead of going straight. That's it's really what made the big difference. Uh, there were nine other hunters there, not at the same time, but had been in that area and really good hunters. Yeah. But I think it was getting all of us because uh, we, instead of turning left to an unknown rock formation, we were all going to Balanced Rock, which is a landmark there. It's the landmark you go and see a when big, you go on the Sunset Trail. Isn't that mm-hmm. a big, beautiful rock formation? Yeah, yeah. It's a big, beautiful <laughs> and, rock formation and of that's two what, boulders that are kind of balancing. Yeah, yeah. and that, that was one of the clues in the book. You know, it's like, it says, yeah. because basically what Breakfast Team Bourbon was, these friends went on a cross-country trip to go on a treasure hunt and they go to if you can figure out where they went follow in their footsteps you can get to the spot they got to and recover a real treasure that's kind of the story right Mm -hmm. and yeah so one of the last things they did before they found the treasure in the book is they had gone to this big beautiful rock formation and the the only piece that was you know like that's what everybody wanted to do when they got to hot springs arkansas you just had that extra piece of the puzzle where it, it tells you to to take that left instead of go straight and it's just it's so easy to miss i mm-hmm. once uh Deidre and i figured out it was in hot springs and we had done much of what you did to try to figure it out you know we weren't we, we weren't going to go boots on the ground out there and we probably we, we wouldn't have figured that out until we figured this out after the fact um mm-hmm. yeah but totally understand how missing that one little piece just like it makes the puzzle crumble and you guys yeah, did it. Yeah, it was a, definitely a red herring in the book. I, I think mm-hmm. it's in like the first or second chapter. He talks about his friend being a balanced rock. And, yeah. and that really stands out. And it, it just dry, you know, drove everybody, you know, to that stone to take. And some people took bearings. Some people didn't know to take the bearing. Um, and really the, the bearing and the 68 feet down uh, as the mockingbird flies, <laughs> that was kind of the, the missing piece. It was from that Mitt and Timmy treasure hunt dream sequence in the book. But once you're on the right, once you turn left and got on the right rock and you took that bearing, it literally took you right to it. And we, we knew it when we were on the rock and we took the bearing and, and looked down about 68 feet. We could see where, where it was. And we yeah. said, it's right there. <laughs> you know, and so we <laughs> ran down there and boom, you know, there it was. That is so cool. I love, you couldn't really afford to go, but you couldn't not afford to go, like, or go and <laughs> yeah. not find it. It just, it's crazy. The whole story. I love it. Yeah. It, it, we needed to go. And I knew, like, like I say, I knew when I woke up that morning, it's going to be in my hands by the end of the day. We have to go. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So we just can't pass it up. And, and it is just this, what like the 100 has become like maybe a dirty word now right <laughs> but i was 100 percent confident that it was there i just you know went and got it you know and there it was and i was 100 percent correct mm-hmm. you know, that that time well, yeah you guys did it and you came away with the prize and it was super impressive i remember the moment i got the email i was like sitting in my car at this restaurant you know just checking my stuff before i drove off and i saw this email from Pete Bissonette, Learning Strategies, said that the treasure had been found. I was like, what? You gotta be kidding. <laughs> I like took a screenshot of it immediately and sent it to Deidre. I'm like, I can't believe this is over. Yeah. Yeah. And but we're just we're so happy for you guys, so proud of you guys. And isn't Pete just really good at making treasure hunts and puzzles? Like that was a real that one was a lot of fun. I but on the flip side, it's pretty crazy. You looked at it and then two weeks later had <laughs> found the treasure. You know, <laughs> that's saying something about you. There was I don't know, thousands of people working on this thing for months and months and months and couldn't figure it out. So mad props to you and your wife and your kids for continuing to figure out every little piece of that puzzle that got you to the X marks spot. Mad, mad yeah. props. 
Well, thank you. And it wasn't every single piece. Uh, you know, I, I felt like that's maybe what, what a lot of hunters maybe have gotten wrong with it, mm -hmm. is that they were trying, because they were like, yeah, I had a pizza on mouth, 13 or 14 <laughs> clues. <laughs> uh, and so I think people were trying to find all of it. Uh, and for me, all I wanted was two. Yeah, I just needed one clue to say where it was, and I needed a second clue to validate the first clue. Mm -hmm. And once I had that, I quit looking. I was like, now, okay, I know where it is. Now I got to see the landmarks. And that's where I went to YouTube and started looking up GoPros and hikers and, Interesting. and stuff like that. So once I'd kind of figured out that part of it really early on, then it was just like, okay, is it really here? Can I see the landmarks before I commit money and time? Mm -hmm. And once I saw those, it was like the very first video. And I, you know, I think it was, there's a treasure hunter on the treasure hunting forum. His name's Razorback. Yeah. And he hiked that trail with a GoPro camera. And it was his video hmm. that I used uh, to see the landmarks. So he may regret the day he did it. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Feel, Razorback. I, I feel like you should send him a bottle of wine or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he posted the video of him hiking that trail with a GoPro camera. I think him and his wife. Uh, and that was the video I watched. And I saw the landmarks. And then yeah. I knew uh, it's cool. there. Uh, and That's so, cool. I, you know, Aiden went over, my son went over everything with me. And we said, okay, let's do it. We're going to do it. And it was, again, it was a great experience. Mm -hmm. Definitely awesome. a, a fun thing to do with the family. I'd recommend it to anybody, especially if you can find it and, and change your lives, you know, for the better. Heck yeah, that's cool. Hey, by the way, saying that you figured out everything is just an expression, okay? You know, <laughs> my bad. I, I, I kind of, I, sometimes I speak a little too big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> usually I have to be like, you need to calm down. 100% <laughs> guaranteed you're right. <laughs> All right. Well, that's awesome. Love the story of Breakfast Team Bourbon. We really need Pete to make another treasure hunt. Yeah. That's what this yeah. all boils yeah, down to. Do. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully he will. You know, hopefully the, the second one will come out. And if there's one thing I know about Pete. Well, there, I'll say two things I know about Pete. You know, one, he's uh, a great treasure hunt builder. Uh, that was a lot of fun. There were a lot of different little things in there. And with that embossed dot map on the cover, and just cool. every, all the little things that you could find, you know, from that book, brilliant. Yeah. Uh, the second thing is the man can keep a secret. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I tried to talk, to, you know, like quiz him out of information because I went to his house and spent some time with him uh, receiving the treasure. And I was trying to extract information because there's two more hunts. There's you know, number two, number three still mm -hmm. to come. And boy, he is so tight-lipped, you can't get anything out of him. Uh, he, he is very, very good at not talking about things. Very elusive guy when he needs to be. <laughs> oh, that's what you got to do, right? Yeah. If you're one of these creators, you want it to be fair and square for everybody. And, uh, you know, I do I do the same thing, man. Like, we had lunch with Pete a couple months ago. I wasn't really trying to get, like, information out of him, but... But he's very he, careful about what he, he says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh... I don't know, like we, we didn't get nothing, but we didn't really expect anything. We just wanted to have a good time, right? Mm -hmm. So Yeah. yeah we cool. got to see the flute, but it was no longer worth that amount of money. So Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, now it's kind of priceless. Yeah. Sorry. Right. True. Sounds yeah. like a MasterCard commercial. Yeah, basically. <laughs> All right. Well, cool. Breakfast Team Bourbon was awesome. Oh, you met one last thing. You mentioned those uh, dots embossed under the... Dust jacket. Dust jacket of the book. Mm -hmm. Man, that is just brilliant. That just blew my mind when I first saw it. My son was like jumping on the couch and knocked my book on the floor and the dust jacket fell off. And I was like, well, thanks a lot. Like, thanks a lot, kid. <laughs> yeah. And I pick it up and I see these dots. I'm like, what the heck is this? And I'm like, mm -hmm. no way. It's a freaking treasure map. Like mm -hmm. legit. Yeah. It was a treasure map embossed on the cover of the book. And you, if you could figure out what those dots mean, it gets you to your X marks the spot, which was from New Orleans. To yeah, where from you found New Orleans it. all the way up to Hot Springs. And yeah, it, that's the first thing I do when I get a book. I take the dust jacket off. That's the very first thing. Oh. Uh, I try to protect it. And so I saw the dot map. It was like one of the first things that I saw. <laughs> uh, and then I knew immediately it was a treasure map. Mm -hmm. I just needed to know where it started and where it finished. And, mm -hmm. and it really helped me kind of put everything together. Yeah, you figured out the Ho Daddy Tisk Tisk Pretty Fly Intro Fly South Georgia thing, right? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that took yeah, me that like was... over a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. When he, I, I believe he said it in an interview. I, that's another thing I do. So beyond the book, I'll I'll go and find every TV appearance, every interview he had on the radio, everything to 
to hear like the words he used to mm-hmm. describe it uh, because I, I really think there's a power in words and like what you choose to say can hold a lot of meaning in it. And so I listened to everything that he said when he was promoting the book and there's several interviews where he said two types of people are going to solve this hunt. And he said, you know, one person is going to break it all down and they're going to figure out all these clues and the 13 or 14 clues, and, and then they're going to go and find it. He said the other hunter is going to look at it very simply. They're going to put two and two together, and it's going to be that easy, and they're going to find it. And when he said that puts two and two together, you know, that's where the whole daddy tisk tisk thing came from. Yeah. Because you take the first two of every word, put it together, and you have Hot Springs, Arkansas. That's incredible. Uh, and so I feel like he, I don't know if he gave it away in that interview, or if it was like back of his mind and kind of came up into his speech or whatever. Uh, but it was that those interviews is what helped me kind of have the key, you know, that kind of unlocked those for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you guys did it. That was, that was, uh, that's one of my favorite treasure hunt stories now. So good job, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs> uh, that, I think that's one of my favorite parts of the expedition unknown episode when he asks you, so how'd that work out for you? Yeah. <laughs> well, alrighty then, you know. <laughs> yeah, that went pretty well. Josh is like, this guy's legit. Too legit to yeah, they needed that. To, they needed to establish that because I literally have no credibility otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> like, no one knew who I was. So, That's this coy guy, you know, on the secret, you know. Uh, so they needed that to uh, to establish that, you know, I can do this stuff and, yeah. you know, that I do think and research and, and basically breakfast, tea, and bourbon. It was a successful track record i'm an articulate person you mm-hmm. know who can talk that's good <laughs> uh, yeah. you know uh, but i am you know kind of a pair of fresh eyes you know I, I didn't come at this from looking at data from from 40 years ago i i kind of did my own research on it i looked at my own things i came mm-hmm. up with my own conclusions and I, you know of course i used you know there's a wiki out there with all this on it of course i double checked with that you know who mm-hmm. wouldn't did you get as sunburnt as we did? Because, <laughs> wow, that's all I got to I, say. <laughs> I did. I did. Uh, I don't have much hair. <laughs> yeah, I burned it off throughout all my use of my creativity over the years <laughs> and all my thinking. But, yeah, I got totally burned. Uh, and you can see it, I think. Uh, like the capstan scene is I am scorched. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you look close enough, we're kind of in the dark. But you can see I am scorched in that scene. That, <laughs> Uh, and I, I don't really sunburn that much. I just turn brown because I, from, I'm a Texan. I just turn brown. I don't really get <laughs> mm-hmm. sunburned. But you can see I'm like brown, you know, from. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I grew up in California, right in the Central Valley. I remember once going to school, year, a year around school where we do three months on, three months off. Or sorry, we do three months on, one month off. One of my three months on was in July. It was 115 degrees. They canceled school because it's so hot. So I grew up in the hot, hot weather too. My skin always mm-hmm. just browns, but <laughs> I I burn like crazy. And we were we, we were kind of making fun of Josh for like putting keep, on sunscreen. Yeah, so all much the sunscreen. Time. I was like, what are you doing, dude? But he knew something mm-hmm. we didn't know. <laughs> he even yeah. offered it yeah. to us. You'd think we'd take the hint. Yeah, yeah. I was like, nah, I'm good, dude. <laughs> I had sunscreen on my face. I was like, I'm fine. And Dustin doesn't burn. And we woke up in the morning. I'm like, ow. Ow. (laughs) Yeah, my face was kind of red when we get to our dig. Hey. Yeah, I could see your forehead. You know, that it's gotten redder. That was hilarious. For sure. You know, and that's so crazy. Like, our segment on the show, we went from Stonewall's Door, the air smells sweet, just the first two little pieces of the verse. And then we jumped all the way to the end. We missed everything in the middle. It's like we ran okay. through it. Yeah, it's like we ran straight through the whole thing. It's it's just funny that like all of a sudden I'm sunburned. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's yeah. true. <laughs> it's like where'd you guys go? What'd you do? So much. You know, yeah. you don't get to see. Yeah. It's it's insane. But I want to talk about that cat stand. Man, that is so flipping cool that you yeah. guys gotta go and check it out. That thing is elusive. People know where it is, but nobody gets to go see it. Yeah. Yeah. From what I hear anyway. I'm sure some uh, yeah. people have got some access, but like in a warehouse and nobody gets to see it. Yeah. I mean, it was behind a chain, the door and everything. Wow. Uh, yeah. It was, it was really cool. To, I mean, it's, it's the same thing I was talking about. Like you look at Google maps and then you go to the park and see it for real. 
you know, you're looking at these photos and then you like, you pull a tarp away and there's this thing that mm-hmm. you've been looking at, you know, uh, and it's, it's again, another one of those surreal, almost like religious moments yeah. you know, where you're like, oh my gosh, it's the Holy Grail. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to touch it. <laughs> right. Oh, you know? that's cool. So it's one of those moments for sure. So you guys did find something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did. We found the capstan <laughs> and, it, and it's plaques, would happen, which happened to be just right nearby. They're literally like on my elbow. <laughs> <laughs> My That's favorite. Uh, quick question: What's a capstan? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, yeah. Did y'all hear me say it like on the air? It's like a big wheel that you turn and wraps up rope. And I said mm-hmm. it in the most Texan cowboy <laughs> kind of accent. It was like the most embarrassing part for me. And my, my family laughed at me. <laughs> oh, don't worry. There's plenty of laugh at me Deidre moments. Oh so. my gosh. <laughs> How about when I was explaining what the high poster three could have been with the ta- with the metal tower with my fingers? Come yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not like you're flipping me off. I, I don't bad. let him lift that down. Yeah, that was, yeah, I thought that was, that pretty was funny. funny too. <laughs> yeah. You're looking forward to going back to Charleston someday, I assume. Yeah, if we can if we can get the permit. Um, I mean, I'll tell you, but the park director there told me personally, I stood with him and chatted with him for a bit, and he told me that if I did not pull it out of the ground, you know, that weekend, uh, that he would never approve another permit again, wow. that it would be over. Uh, and so chances of digging out there again, I think, are extremely slim, uh, if that is his honest, you know, mentality on it. Mm-hmm. Now, could he be convinced? Maybe. You know, mm-hmm. there's, it doesn't hurt to try. Uh, but I hear that even now he's refusing to return calls. Uh, obviously, this has sparked a lot of new interest mm-hmm. you know, in going out and digging. And he's not even answering or returning calls at all at this point. Uh, so that may be kind of a dead end at this point until yeah. another cast gets brought up somewhere else, and then he may be back on board. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we heard a lot about that before we solidified where we were going to go. We had heard from some of these other cities, hey, we will give you guys permission if you find some- one somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, mm-hmm. that's a thing. Mm-hmm. So regardless if somebody finds one where you think it is, where we think something is, using their own theories, our shadow theory, whatever the heck it is, if you find one, you're going to be able to probably get a chance to go find mm-hmm. others, and maybe mm-hmm. the dominoes will fall. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the that's what I uh, had heard, too, is that a lot of parks will say no until, you know, one is is brought up and then everyone will say yes. Uh, And so it's really just going to take that one to kind of break it open. uh, And then I think we'll see parks begin to allow diggers to come in and and get things that or that one specific person Mm -hmm. will be granted permits rather easily, Uh, Mm -hmm. like with Charleston. You know, we could not get a permit or I, I could not get a permit unless you know, I sent this really detailed presentation. We had to have GPR data that proved that in that specific dig site that there was an anomaly in the ground. Uh, and so it's, you know, some of the perception may be, you know, uh, expedition unknown. I use the GPR, they're cheating. It wasn't expedition unknown that did the GPR. It was the park that demanded that we use a GPR mm-hmm. to get the permit. And so it was really the parks and not uh, Expedition Unknown. Uh, so yeah. that came through, you know, their request yeah, but uh, that, to that, prove that there was something there. That led to that funny moment, though, where, you know, he said, some people think it's cheating. I don't care. You know, <laughs> yeah. I just yeah. want to go I find this that. Thing. That was pretty funny. I don't care. It's been 40 years almost. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's do this. Let's solve it. It's... Yeah, yeah. I mean, at this point, I support anything. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, just just find one, somebody, <laughs> please. please. <laughs> Whether it's me or you or, or someone Whoever. else, it, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, to I me. think you know. It's I think we're rooting everybody on. Mm-hmm. All right, we're just rooting the entire community on. Go find one, please. We would love to yeah. see one of these pulled out of the ground. I hope it's not in pieces. If it is, it is. Whatever. You know, let's just find one of these things. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see it open back up, you know, and that's mm-hmm. what it's going to take. It's going to take one person being successful. Mm-hmm. And I almost feel like at this point, it's got to be a group effort. Um, I'm just scanning things at this point. I'm like, here is everything I've had and researched. <laughs> yeah. Please you know, go get one. <laughs> it's so funny. Like, I've just been throwing everything out onto, like, we have a Facebook group for the secret and i've been throwing out like basically every theory we've ever had you know you know one other thought 
uh, on the community working together. You know, it, it makes me think of like an analogy of like you're trying to catch an elusive murderer <laughs> and the police departments are all trying to find it, but they won't work with each other because they want to be the one to find it. Mm -hmm. You know, but so I think it's going to come to a point where it, like you're right. I think the police departments need to start sharing information. They start working together, you know, and then as a as a larger group, as a larger consciousness you know mm -hmm. they can find this killer and, and kind of bring it to justice uh and treasure hunters are are like that they're very competitive they don't mm -hmm. want to share they they have some little tidbits they don't want to give them out you know mm -hmm. uh, but it may take something of a hunt of this magnitude you know of where you're just going to have to throw those things out there yeah. and and let's all work together and find it you know so i, I totally agree with that and, and glad that you are sharing that kind of stuff too i mean that shadow theory is incredible you know and you know i think it's really something and so hopefully people can take that and use it and and these things start coming up and by proxy you guys have found it too in a way mm -hmm. yeah uh so everyone kind of finds it depending on who's putting in the information so mm -hmm. yeah. but anyway yeah we're just really happy we're able to finally tell people our ideas and throw out all of our theories we'd like to get our theory out there i mean we could have just said it to the world but you know well what better way to deliver it to the world <laughs> than right. on national television with the most acclaimed treasure hunter on tv Seriously. Uh, to millions and millions of audience members that's, that's the perfect venue you know for your uh for your idea or for the the theory mm -hmm. of the secret you know so i, I think that's the, the best way it could have happened I'm just happy that we can start talking to people because for a long time, we just couldn't talk to people. That's just mm -hmm. the, the fact of the matter. We just yeah. couldn't, we couldn't uh, give out a lot of what we thought publicly, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it's big weight off of our shoulders. I'm just happy that, you know, even if people don't like the shadow thing, like I've had, I'd say we probably had about 97, 98% of positivity of like people saying, yeah, you guys are awesome. You guys were wonderful on the show. Good job. We've had uh, a few people that said, you know, that that's in that 97, 98% say, you know, I'm not so into your theory, but you guys did really cool. We're proud of you. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a few people, like the 2 or 3% that say, yeah, you, you guys don't know what you're talking about, whatever. You know, I'm, I'm like, okay, that's cool. You guys, you guys yeah. have your own theories. We have our own theories, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's just, that's how these things work. Mm -hmm. But I'm just happy that we can get it out there. If people like it, go apply it. If you don't like it, whatever, it's all good. Find a theory that works for you and go dig up a treasure. Mm -hmm. That's just, mm -hmm. that's just a fact. Yeah, exactly. That's and there's exactly right. so little to no monetary value in these anymore. It really is bragging rights. Let, mm -hmm. Let's be real. So at this point, I'm like, just go find it. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we got some people in the next couple months that are going to go look at some shadows for us. Who knows? And they, lots of people ha are going to be entering the hunt. Maybe one of those people have whatever the idea is that will unlock something that would never have happened without the show being on. So, yay. Mm -hmm. Hooray. Hooray. Hooray for the new people. <laughs> we love you guys. Yeah. All right. So let's switch gears a little bit. Were there any other treasure hunts that you worked on extensively in the past you know, year or two, whatever? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I put in a lot of time, a, a mountain of time uh, on Map of the Dead, so Murray Bailey's Map of the Dead. Just an exorbitant, ridiculous <laughs> amount of time uh, on that, you know, from translating hieroglyphs. So there was success in that. And then mm -hmm. trying to translate the cuneiform, you know, that was in there. And, uh, just all the different things that were in that that book. Uh, but, yeah, spent a lot of time doing that. And, and uh, I know you guys did, too. That hunt was freaking fabulous. <laughs> it was like, wasn't bananas. it awesome? Like, it was so well made. It was. It was. And it was entertaining it, the whole time. Yeah, like, it was very deep. It yeah. was very deep. And, and when you base it on all that history and all the things you get to encounter along the way, it made it a whole lot of fun. Yeah, I know a lot about ancient Egypt now. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I make this and joke. Their heaven some... and their religion. <laughs> yes, I mean, I a lot. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. It's so funny. I make this joke all the time. We live near Portland, Oregon, and Deidre knows uh, the roads of London, England better than the roads of Portland, Oregon from <laughs> yeah. studying Map of the Dead. It's sad. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, that was a good one. 
It reminds me a lot of Breakfast Tea and Bourbon just because how it was laid out through a novel. It's just there was no physical boots on the ground. It was a series of four questions. Yeah. yeah. I actually did some boots on the ground for that. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I went to London uh, and looked around hoping that I might spot something oh, that's right. you know, there. So, yeah, I, I really tried to find it when I was I was on a, a tour for the college that I work with. But my ulterior motive <laughs> was to find whatever I could, you know, and, and, and maybe uncover something while I was there. What'd you find? Uh, I was, uh, you know, I did find, uh, I didn't find uh, the, the very thing, you know, but what I did find that was really cool is like right off of Trafalgar Square, there were these like gold, um, I don't want to say they're like nail heads, but kind of like nail heads uh, in the like cobblestone street. And so, and you, and it was like a trail, almost like breadcrumbs. Hmm. And so I got onto that thing and started, because there were these little gold breadcrumbs that just kind of went, I don't know what it was leading me. I eventually lost it. It was like, went through a corner of a building what? or something. And I kind of lost track of it in an alley. So wow. I don't know where it went. I need to look that up <laughs> and see what that was. But I followed that for a while thinking, Hey, maybe this is something. Just go you know, wandering Just off. a really curious little detail, you know. Yeah, it's funny uh, that we studied so much of London and it ended up being a couple hundred miles away, like where the yeah, where the yeah. X marks the spot was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, total other other side of the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. That one, yeah. That one was a lot of fun. It it was so cool uh, figuring out that map cuz people might not be aware if you're not go buy Map of the Dead. It, it's just a fun book. It's it, it's not just a treasure hunt. It's a thriller. It's um, an adventure. It's just a, a fun story. Uh, mm-hmm. Murray Bailey's the author. You know, Koi already said it, but go buy it. It's just, it's a good story. So every chapter of the book has a different icon of sorts in it. Some of them have the hieroglyph, or some of them have a hieroglyph in, on the chapter. Like chapter one would be a hieroglyph. Like chapter two might have a a symbol of like cuneiform script or something. Chapter three might have something that's just like a weird shape. And you're just like, what is that? Like, what does that mean? And I remember the day Deidre and I went to IHOP. She got all these pieces that she had uh, took photographs of, printed out, cut them out and starts putting them together like a puzzle. And she's like, I think these fit together. And it was just, it blew my mind when she put that together. And then I was like, Oh my gosh, you know what we're looking at? And she's like, no, <laughs> and I said, it looks like a maze. And lo and behold, the answer to that stage, that was stage three, was a maze. Well, I hadn't read the book yet either, so I had no idea what I was putting together. I was like, mm-hmm. well, doesn't this all just fit together, all the ones that don't, oh my you gosh. know, work? And he's like, no, I've tried. I was like, no, they fit. So I just took them all out and started putting them together. You had taken a nap or something, came downstairs. You're like, what is that? Like, I don't know. That didn't happen at IHOP? No, at IHOP, I said, wow, I think those just all fit together. And so I went home and made it. And then you came downstairs and were like, say what? Yeah, I got the gist of the story right. Yeah, you almost did. I feel like we should be a sponsor for IHOP, though, because we mention them all the time. Yeah, so much. (laughs) For our breakthroughs. Yeah, well, hey. Great pancakes, man. Yeah, so, (laughs) but that just blew my mind when I was like, hey, I'm looking at a maze. And then we had to figure out what maze it was. And then we figured that out. And we're like, wow. Yeah, and it's an exact duplicate. Yeah. You know, part of that maze, not the entire maze, but it is an exact like overlay, you know, of that maze. It's kind of bananas. (laughs) It was really cool part of the book that to have to interact with it in that way uh, was really interesting. Yeah, that was a uh, Glen Durgan Garden. Yeah, right. So yeah, cool. yeah, so cool. Yeah, Bring well, Map of the here. Dead's awesome. I think you guys should go read it. And then there's a sequel. I think we mentioned this on one of our past episodes, but there's a sequel called Secrets of the Dead, and a new book coming out real soon called The Lost Pharaoh. It's it's basically the part of Map of the Dead and Secrets of the Dead that's set in ancient Egypt as a full story. And those were such fun parts of the book. So. I can't wait to get my hands on it. All right. So you mentioned actually being over in London looking for whatever in regards to Map of the Dead. Maybe it was breadcrumbs. You were over there with students. Uh, like, what do you do in your off time? Yeah, because well, is, yeah. is that off time? Yeah, maybe I guess it's <laughs> on time. You don't hang out with students on off time. <laughs> no, I don't hang out with students in my off. I treasure hunt in my off time. There we go. Uh, but when I'm 
on, Tom, I guess. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a college professor uh, of the visual arts, and so I, I mainly teach in advertising and graphic design, and that's why I like the, the dot pattern on that book jacket jumps out to me, and, mm-hmm. and the paintings and the secret jump out to me. But I teach, you know, advertising graphic design, so that's art direction and illustration and typography, but also teach in the fine arts as well. And so drawing and painting and art appreciation and those kinds of things. And, and so a lot of this... You know, like if it has to do with paintings or a, an artist doing anything, then it's or if it's a design related issue, those things really jump out at me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that I can have a little bit of an advantage sometimes just because of my training and how I look at things. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, so I, I take students overseas on different art tours. And so we, we went to London. We'll go to Paris and see all the museums and been to to Dublin and been all over Scotland and coming up in May we're going to go to Rome and go up and down Italy and and so fortunately I get to travel you know quite a bit through the college and you know it's great when there's potential buried treasures in these places Uh, and so you know if I can figure things out on certain treasure hunts and do boots on the ground you know overseas then you know that's that would it's incredible you know it's a real opportunity and I thank the college for you know affording that. I couldn't do it on my own. I get to go for free uh, Ooh, because nice. the college kind of pays for everything. Nice. That's killer. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty sweet gig. <laughs> you know, I really appreciate it. Are you going to you're going to Italy? But you said you had gone to Paris. Are... Uh huh. Yeah, I've been to Paris several times now. Oh well, the next time you go, you can go find the Golden Owl. Yeah. Oh, I need to do. That. Yeah. Let me write that down. <laughs> Fair. Get to work. Because yeah, I'll be uh, going to Paris in May. There you go. Boom. It'll take him two weeks to solve it. Watch. <laughs> right. Golden Owl <laughs> next on my list. Right. Yeah, and, and then we will have you back on the podcast after that to talk about that success. So it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see if I find it. We'll you're, see. You're, yeah. going, you're going to Boston soon, aren't you? I am. I go to Boston at the end of the month. I, I sure do. I know a treasure there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm hoping to meet up with some secret people and, and maybe try to probe some spots or something, try to nice. see what we can find. Cool. So, so before, like, we're not going to, we'll probably do this again at the end of the episode, but if there's anybody in Boston that can help you out with uh, bringing a probe or something, how do they contact you? Um, you know, you can go to my website. So I have com, and there's a contact form there that they can use. Cool. Uh, I don't necessarily want to give out, you know, personal information because sure. you never know who's listening, but You're right. uh, I'm fine to respond, you know, through the contact form on my website. And again, that's coylothrop.com. And that's a tough name, so I'll spell it. Yeah. <laughs> and the blatant plug, uh, but C-O-Y-L-O-T-H-R-O-P.com. Yeah. Well, what else is on your website? Uh, well, you know, as I'm also like I'm a teacher who teaches uh, in the visual arts, I'm also a student who's completing my MFA uh, in studio art. And so I'm a figurative oil painter. And so you'll see my artwork there, you know, like my master's thesis is there. Uh, I've worked in ceramics. You'll see the ceramics there. I also write for film. So you'll see like a writing page and the things that I've sold and, and things like that. So it's just kind of everything, all my little creative endeavors. That's kind of where I deposit it all uh, for people to see, and kind of be a part of that experience. And if anyone wanted to buy a painting, <laughs> you know, I would gladly sell them. You know, <laughs> just the contact form. Uh, the prices are there <laughs> on the website. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's basically, you know, as I paint, I'm kind of putting the work there for people to see. Yeah, your the paintings are just beautiful. I know I've shown them to many a people. I'm like, you see that guy? You got it. Where where's his website? Go pull up his mm-hmm. website. You gotta check this out. And it's just it blows me away. Yeah, and, you're a pretty yeah. amazing artist, dude. Well, thank you very much. Like, I really appreciate that. Like really good. And you just mentioned that you're not just a painter, but you work with ceramics. I could uh-huh. almost I could like envision right now like the secret part two and you're like the artist that makes the new casks oh and and you also make the new paintings you ever think of like i you know that's just a funny pie in the sky thing but you ever think about making some kind of treasure hunt yourself because literally your artwork is amazing you know um we know he's a writer we know you're a writer we know you're a creative guy but i don't know if you can hide any clues and a piece of artwork maybe 
Yeah, that's a challenge. Yeah, you know, dude. that's a challenge. I could. All, I had this idea of sculpting something, doing paintings, and writing poetry. No, it's not really. I haven't. <laughs> um, I mean, I've thought about. <laughs> I've thought about. Um, you know, writing. I've always wanted to write a novel. And after kind of the breakfast tea and bourbon thing, I mean, I thought really hard and heavy about the, like writing a treasure hunt book and kind of incorporate incorporating clues and all that kind of stuff. And um, I, I think it would be a blast to do. Um, right now, because of like all my MFA work, I just I have so little time, mm-hmm. you know, really hardly even a treasure hunt. But uh, all that's completing, you know, very soon. Uh, and then once that all kind of completes, I'll be wide open again. Kind of how like breakfast tea and bourbon happened. I was in a summer where I had no school taking that summer off. And so I was able to dedicate like a ton of time to it. Uh, And so that's what that's going to take is, you know, for me to finish up my MFA and then, you know, who knows, maybe I'll write a book and do some paintings and sculpt a cask and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we'll see what happens, but there's an, there's an interest there. There's a real, you know, interest there. Sure. You know, we'll see. (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm an instigator so i'm just gonna say do it i'm gonna yeah, just send yeah. you a, like a gif a day cheering you on yeah. to go and do it <laughs> it'd be cool if myself and two other treasure hunters and uh, uh a pete bizonette maybe yeah it could <laughs> all came a... together and <laughs> you know kind of uh made something all together that i was think that would the be greatest fun. hunt of all time you know? boom Quite, yeah. quite possibly, it could be. Hmm, I think it should happen. Yeah, something to think about. <laughs> we'll have your, our, we'll have our people call your people. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Oh, All right, funny. cool. Well, um, I don't want to keep you too long, but I do have some questions from some listeners. Would you be willing to just answer a few? Yeah, sure. We can do that. Cool. So we have a couple questions from Lisa Tillman. And she asks you, Koi, she says, Koi, do you have any pictures or names of those listed on the bronze plaque that were on the capstan uh, that you would be willing to share? We were limited to see only Benjamin R. I do not have any photography. Uh, Unfortunately, I didn't travel with a camera. Uh, I didn't take any photos other than with my cell phone uh, of like one of the pathways. But once all the cameras turned on, it's like, do I even have a camera? <laughs> I, mean, I, was so, <laughs> I was so blitzed at the experience that any kind of forethought of recording the event for, <laughs> for later enjoyment mm-hmm. or any other clues from me, I, I completely uh, blanked on that kind of aspect of it. And so, no, I, I don't have any, any images. You know, I'm sorry, Lisa. Bummer. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. I think what was written on those plaques is kind of documented elsewhere. We'll have to yeah. find it yeah, for her. Yeah, I'll find it and I'll make sure we send it to her. She also says, or she also asks, do you have a take on the following verse lines? Edwin and Edwina, named after him, or on the eighth, is seen. And do you feel that those two lines go together? Uh, it, you know, that came up, and you know, I don't know how much that, because I don't think that made it into the episode that actually got cut uh, from what was on the air and but with Edwin and Edwina, you know, named after him, you know, I felt like, and, and the wiki says this too, you know, but it was kind of the Edward Blyden line, you know, from abroad in America. Yeah. And so we even used that as a prop and pointed things out, that kind of stuff. And then, you know, the thing that I think is specific to that is how he uses the word or. Remember, I talked about like a power in words. And when he used the word or, so Edwin and Edwina named after him, or on the eighth, the scene. And so to me, it's like, or where law defended. And so to me saying either, or will get you to this point. And, and my feeling on that is that we're, we're pre internet at this point, there's no internet. Mm -hmm. And so this is like library work or it's on the ground work. And Mm -hmm. so Edwin and Edwina come out of that book, something that you would find in the library that references Charleston, you know, Edward Blyden and how he lived there. And he, you know, had these kids. Or on the eighth of a scene where law defended, well, that's that Steed Bonnet monument. Uh, and so what I thought maybe, and this is honestly probably a weak connection, but there's two Edwards at play between those two oars. And so the library version abroad in America deals with Edward Blyden, or on the ground where law defended Steed Bonnets. Um, he was an associate or a protege or the apprentice of another pirate, Blackbeard, 
Well, Blackbeard's name is Edward Teach. And so we actually have two different Edwards on each side of mm. that or. And so I think that even though that's a thin connection, you know, it's pre-internet, you can find this in a book or you can find it on the ground. And we have two Edwards on each side of it. And so I felt pretty strongly about that connection, even though it may be thin, that's the way you would have to come to, you know, to arrive at that. Mm -hmm. You know, one says Charleston and one says you're in the right park. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was my take on it. Interesting. Yeah, that's that's something I've never heard. So thanks for educating us. That, that yeah, was seriously. fun to hear. Um, there's also the part of the verse that says freedom at the birth of a century or May 1913. Is that kind of the mm -hmm. same thing where you see the May 1913 if you're there and if you know the history about it, the other part is what would make sense to you? Yeah, exactly. No, exactly. So part of that is library. So the freedom of the birth of the century, you know, so that's the Spanish-American War and, you know, how the USS Maine played a part in that. Uh, that's the library part. Or you can see the capstan, the result of that, or a piece of that history in person on the ground. And so I think that that's where those ors, you know, where Byron is using the word or to tell us you can get at this two ways. You can find it in the books or you can find it by walking up to it. Uh, and I really strongly believe in that. Hmm. Yeah. I really I like, like that. that. I, I, I always kind of just took it as you need both, but I really like the the or because I never really considered the or very much before, to be honest. Yeah, well, you would say and if you needed both. Yeah. But or you only need one. That's really cool. That's I, I mean, that's a good take. I, I'm. It's really straightforward yeah. to the point and it makes sense. I feel it's ashamed simple. that I didn't think of it. As well. No, it, it's the power you should of feel words. Ashamed. And, I mean, I write, and so I understand like every word you choose has a real meaning and importance, and that word "or" has a very distinct and important meaning mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, totally. You know who else says that? Nelson Ware. Nelson Ware. Yeah, <laughs> yeah every word is important. <laughs> Inside joke for uh, breakfast team bourbon riddle, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Were all the slits around the Fort Sumner statue the same, or was one different, which might have made you choose that particular one to dig below? It looked as if you guys GPR'd and excavated that at the four o'clock spot below the slit. Is that true? No, it, it wasn't based on four o'clock. Uh, it's actually based on the African mask that has the map of Charleston on it. So there's two isolates on that mask. There's the left one and the right one. And I believe the right one is somewhat covered. I'm not looking at the image at the moment. I'm just mm -hmm. speaking from memory, but I believe the right eye is a little bit covered. And so from standing between the, the two arms of the statues, if you look over there, uh, you see the two slits and one of them was actually covered a little bit. And it was like looking at the mask, mm. you know, and so that's what kind of led us to that exact spot. And then not only that, but behind it um, on that Defenders Monument is the word courage. And to us, that was kind of, well, in a way, to me, it could have implied the lion because mm -hmm. the lion is a is a symbol of courage. And so we felt like, uh, hey, this could be something. Yeah, yeah I, but I, nothing to do with four o'clock or it was strictly visual cues. Yeah, that's cool. I, I've never seen anybody suggest something like the isolates resembling those openings. So yeah, I like that. Pretty ingenious for you guys, you and your team uh, that were out there doing the searching. That was pretty, pretty good. Yeah, we were looking for visual cues at that point. Uh, and visually from that point between those two arms, that's what we could see uh, mm -hmm. that, that began to make the most sense. And then we just kind of worked through it. Yeah, well, when you're considering the Chicago and Cleveland uh, puzzles that have been completed and solved, they were buried next to or very close to something that clearly stands out in the painting. So it would make sense that if you see those little slits, that would catch my eye, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's cool. All right. And I've got some more questions. We got these from uh, Mr. James R., I can only imagine the amount of research you did regarding the Charleston cask. What resources and or communities were the most helpful for your research? Yeah, so primarily, you know, I worked from the painting and obviously the poem. Uh, anything and everything that I could find online, uh, any kind of resource from, you know, encyclopedias to, to any kind of records or, 
or just anything, you know, but mainly, you know, the image was kind of the big thing for me. You know, obviously I'm looking at uh, like buying prices past like this abroad in America, things like that. Um, you know, you speak about communities or you ask about communities. You know, obviously I went to the, the wiki, you know, for um, the secret and, you know, kind of double check things that I found or was able to pull some information, you know, from that. So that was absolutely a resource. Uh, but beyond that wiki and just standard kind of internet research, you know, that was it. Uh, I am purposely tried to do as much as I could kind of without uh, other people's ideas, because once you get someone's ideas in your head, it's like you can't not see what you've been shown. Yeah. You know? And so I tried to eliminate that as much as possible. But as I was kind of getting things together and I needed something almost like breakfast tea and bourbon, you kind of get an idea and then I needed a validator mm -hmm. uh, to kind of say this is kind of in the right direction or I'm doing something different. Uh, and so, yeah, use the wiki as kind of a validator for certain things. But, you know, as even with the word or, you know, comes into play, there were lots of things with in my presentation that were not on that wiki, you know, that do not match up at all uh, that were completely kind of new thoughts and and I think that's probably um, one of the strengths that I think I brought you know to the hunt and I'm not a 40-year veteran guy who's been looking at ideas from these communities I'm someone who came in with a relatively fresh you know set of eyes and looking at it through the lens of art uh, looking through the lens of design looking at it through the lens of what words were chosen and why from a writer's standpoint. And sure, I came up with some of the same conclusions. You know, there were things that were in the wiki that, you know, also helped validate and confirm certain things. But there's also, you know, a lot of work, you know, just kind of on my own perspective and training that came into play. Were there any other, I mean, we saw you walking around with look like a couple books in your hand and mm -hmm. a few different things when you were down there. Did you have any particular resources that were, you know, on you at all times while you were down there? Yeah, yeah. So the books in my hand, that, that's actually a good point because you see them on the episode. You know, I had Treasure Island, you know, in my hands uh, so that we could look at that and reference passages from that. Uh, I had Abroad in America mm -hmm. in there uh, to reference the, the Blyden passage. Mm -hmm. uh, I also had a book uh, called The Battery, uh, but it was a book that was kind of from that time frame, like in the 70s to 80s time frame, back when it was called The Battery instead of White Point Garden. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, there were there were some great moments that came out of that book, uh, and it, it actually doesn't make it on the air. But when we were looking at the capstan and the trees, the trees around the capstan were actually not there. Wow. <laughs> but we could, we looked in the battery book and the capstan and we could see where the trees were. <laughs> That's <laughs> Because they, where the trees were in that time. And so it was really like, like kind of like you guys did on your part of the episode. You looked back in time with mm -hmm. that app. <laughs> we were able to look back at, in time using that photography from this battery book. Mm -hmm. So it was really a cool moment. Uh, it didn't make it into the show, but it was a, a very helpful book that shows images and what was there and all the write-ups and the information, you know, like the Spanish American war stuff was in it, you know, all that kind of information was in that book. And so it was a great resource. Oh, awesome. Wow. Uh, sounds like we need to get some info and some pictures from you from that book, maybe to share out. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I need to do that. I need to do that. It was like 77 or 79. It was yeah. it was late 70s was the date of that book. Okay. Yeah, that that's really cool. If you can get us some images from it, uh, we'd be really happy to put them on our Facebook. Hey. All right, one more. And another question from James. He asks... After all your study, what surprised you about White Point Garden and or Charleston once you were boots on the ground? What surprised me about it? You know, my first thought was, and this is going to sound negative, is, wow, how small this park is. You know, <laughs> I, I think, and I'm not, I don't mean that to be derogatory. I, I literally, in my head, because you're looking at all this satellite imagery and, things, and I just imagined it much larger kind mm -hmm. of than what it was. Uh, or maybe just the image in my mind was just different. But when I landed there, um, one, I was like, oh, this is small, which I thought actually was a good thing. Because you know, mm -hmm. that means that, you know, from the dig site, you know, maybe everything's visible and, 
you know, it, it might make more sense if we don't have to travel long distances and like lose sight of certain things. Uh, and then the other thing is uh, how it's actually really beautiful. Beautiful trees, beautiful homes, you know, the water's right there. Lots of history and lots of art uh, and sculpture. So I actually really appreciated just kind of the natural beauty, you know, of it. So those two things, kind of its size surprised me, which is a positive. Mm -hmm. And then just the natural beauty of the location. That's cool. So how uh, that White House, Mm -hmm. White House close at hand, do you think that that's that house that's White House looking-ish? I felt I felt that it was uh, uh, oh, what Villa yeah. Margarita I oh, think is what it's called. I have no idea, man. <laughs> I believe it's the Villa Margarita. I'm, I'm scrolling down to find it in my documentation. Yeah, so the Villa Margarita. Yeah, and because the park is so small, it's almost close at hand, kind of no matter where you are mm. <laughs> in the park. But I mean, obviously at the capstan, it's just I mean you can throw a rock and hit it, and it definitely looks like a White House. Uh, so I feel like the Villa Margarita is. If I'm pronouncing that correctly, I could be butchering it the way the Charleston people say it. But, you know, I felt like, yes, it was close at hand. I really think that that is, you know, the correct house, you know, for that line. Well, it looks like the White House. Yeah. Yeah. And we have a few questions from Beth H. that uh, we want to ask you. Did you get to see the finished show before it aired or were there any bloopers? Uh, I did not get to see the finished show before it airs. I, I was only able to to see just a few clips, and I really think it's the same clips that everybody else saw. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really, uh, I really didn't get anything before anybody else. Uh, and I'm sure there were lots of bloopers, <laughs> but they didn't make <laughs> it on onto the show. But yeah, yeah, no blooper reel or anything. Hmm. We had a couple of bloopers that made the show. Uh, yeah, for me, <laughs> apparently that was pretty funny. <laughs> Weird. All right. Does Expedition Unknown have any plans to do future shows on any of the other sites? Um, you know, I, to be honest, um, I said that, um, you know, if I ever found anything else or if there was any, you know, really good information that I could share that we would do another episode. So I think that the, the hope is there. We just somebody, whether it's me or you guys or, mm-hmm. or D&D or somebody <laughs> else. You know, if somebody does, I think he's very open or or even if Beth H does mm-hmm. it, she's a, a very consummate treasure hunter. If mm-hmm. she finds one, I'm sure that an episode is just around the corner. You know, you just got to find one. Mm-hmm. I think if my understanding is if they f- if one is found, there will be another episode. Yeah, I, yeah he, he told sure. me as we were departing, uh, we, you know, we shook hands. He uh, he signed our book mm-hmm. and he said, hey. If you guys find one or if you know anything, call me. I'll be there in 12 hours with my crew. We'll get this documented. So, mm-hmm. yes, it'll happen, but we got to find one. Somebody's got to find yeah. one. Yep. Let us know. If you find one, get you in touch with Josh. 12 hours and counting. Yeah. <laughs> Unless he's in <laughs> Siberia or Antarctica or something like that, probably yeah. be a little bit longer. But yes. whatever. Which is yeah. a possibility with him. Yeah. You just never know. <laughs> you know if Josh does any other armchair treasure hunts? I do not. Well, let's <laughs> I see don't here. Know. We know... I know he's always... Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I, we know he did an episode on the Golden Owl. Maybe. I don't know if he's deep into that one or not. And we know he's done one on Forest Fen. He sure has. So, I don't know. Uh, maybe. It, maybe they would do one if somebody found the Fandango treasure, you know, and document mm-hmm. that. Maybe someone. Maybe they would do one if somebody found... The Oracle. He likes some of these little obscure legends, you know, mm-hmm. and they like to, uh, and things that aren't mainstream, you know, he can kind of bring to the mainstream. So I don't know. I wouldn't count uh, him working on any of them out. I didn't really get the idea from him that they that's what they do or that's what he's into in his free time. But mm-hmm. yeah, maybe. You know, and, and honestly, it's not just Josh that works on things, you know, like his cameraman oh, and yeah. his producers. I mean, they're all working on this kind of stuff, too, you know, trying to bring these things to life. I mean, I think we all typically just think of Josh, but he's got an oh, incredible God. crew of guys that are doing all this stuff behind the scenes. And they're you know, well-versed. Like Brian and Stone and Robert yes. and all these guys. Yeah, they kind of know what they're talking about. <laughs> uh, they a lot know what they're talking about when it comes to the secret. I was very impressed with their knowledge. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. 
they spend a lot of time together. So I would imagine they've probably talked through them. <laughs> and lastly, did you have a big viewing party the day of, or did you have a big viewing party the day it aired, or did you watch it in private? I, not being someone who likes the spotlight, uh, decided to watch it just with my immediate family. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of watched small with just the immediate family. And then we're going to have like a bigger like get together uh, probably here in the next week or so, uh, probably this coming weekend. Uh, and then that way we can kind of pause and, and answer questions and, and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there is a party coming that will kind of explain things you know with with my friends mm -hmm. uh but yeah the initial viewing for me was definitely very private i didn't want a bunch of people looking at me i didn't know how i was going to be portrayed mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you know i just i did it very privately you know how about you guys oh we had a party <laughs> like we went the complete opposite direction yeah yeah we went to a restaurant and kind of took rent rented out the uh, banquet half. room and <laughs> we had what 70 people 80 people something yeah like that nice so <laughs> big party yeah we yeah, did it was fun and then like everybody was so excited and then we didn't find it and everyone's like oh <laughs> yeah well, it was a bunch of them were convinced that we did though so apparently well, we have been selling it well well why'd you put that yeah. black or why'd you put that box with the black cloth over oh, it on top of that table like in front of break. the tv we talked about <laughs> putting one of the like a fake cask under a like a cloth or something so people would think we found one there was actually one there but oh, man. <laughs> we we didn't mess with them we didn't we were good okay yeah, yeah. that would be classic though that'd be great <laughs> yeah that'd be right up dustin's alley that's something though. i like to do yeah. yeah i played a really good prank on someone this year on uh april fool's day regarding a cast oh my gosh it got him bad. good but yeah that's another story all right. Well, we want to thank uh, the listeners for their questions and we have more questions, but uh, they're mostly directed to us. I think there might've been another couple of coy ones in there, but we will uh, save those for another time because uh, we're running along here, but yeah, yeah. let's wrap it up. Yeah, yo. Well, I just want to say one more time, Koi, you're awesome. Thanks for being on our podcast. And it's been an adventure. Yeah. And I I'm glad that we can share the screen with you for an hour on a random October night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it was a lot of fun. And uh, uh, thank you for having me on your show. You know, uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to kind of, you know, tell my part of it, what I can tell mm -hmm. uh, yeah. outside of a non-disclosure agreement. But right. um, it's, you know, it's a great opportunity to kind of let people know what's going on and what happened. And, and I really appreciate that. Um, you know, too, I know we, you know, we shared the screen in October, but, you know, I also want to thank you for, because our friendship goes beyond that. Um, and that's something I don't mind saying, you know, that we've been sounding boards for each other for some time. And, and I just really appre deeply appreciate kind of the friendship that we've been able to develop over the years. And I want you to know that, you know, it means a lot to me. Aww. <laughs> well, thanks, man. Like, uh, yeah, yeah your friendship's pretty, uh, pretty important it's to pretty me good. too no yeah. no, no it, it's, it's, it's okay you know it's 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 all right it, it's all right we can we can take it or leave it <laughs> yeah. oh man oh man i don't know how we can end it any better than that, that was great. Yeah, it's like, how do you come back he, he did that to josh when we were leaving and yeah. someone was like picture and dustin goes nah we're good and <laughs> He's like for real. <laughs> he goes, no, I'm just kidding. It was pretty funny. Yeah. But, Sorry, yeah. you can't you can't take everything I say like at face value. I'll, I Ever. I usually immediately say just kidding, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, but Koi, you're awesome. I appreciate your friendship, and I always appreciate you being my sounding board. So let's yeah. go find another one. Let's go find another treasure. Right. Yeah, and we will. We, it's yeah. just a matter. We're not treasure hunters. We're treasure finders. You know, now we just got to do it. Yeah. Well, when you found the breakfast tea and bourbon treasure, I found you. Yeah. <laughs> the real treasure. Oh. oh, man. Okay. It's getting real corny. Koi, how can people get a hold of you one last time? Uh, yeah. So you can always go to, again, koilotherup.com, C O I L O T H R O P.com. And there's a contact form there. So if you wanted to pass along any information or if you had any questions, you know, you could contact me through that form and I'll do my best to reply. Actually, since the show, I've been pretty 
swamped with with messages and things and you, <laughs> you know, too some of them i get back to some yeah. of them i don't get back to you know but i'll do the best i can absolutely and then of course we will make sure to include that link in our show notes so people can easily find your page and be able to get to you yeah and go look at his art okay. like if you love his art uh you know buy it or whatever but buy it like whatever. <laughs> tell him we think this guy can make a killer treasure hunt puzzle with his art. So just saying, if you agree, if you think that there's something there, let him know. Egg him on. Egg him on. Let's push him All to right. make a, a treasure hunt. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Awesome. Thank you for joining us, Koi, and we will talk to you again soon. Okay. You guys I, have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Well, I really enjoyed talking to Koi. Yeah, and I can't wait until he crafts his own treasure hunt. It's going to happen. Yes, we just need to keep convincing him the little uh, extra push well that was an awesome interview we want to thank koi again you're you're a great guy and i think my favorite thing i've ever said on a podcast probably ever is when you found the breakfast team <laughs> bourbon treasure i found you <laughs> that wasn't that good that was that was pretty classic oh, that felt like it should be in cursive on a hallmark card yeah on a hallmark card <laughs> yeah wow. Yeah, something oh, like that. It's getting real corny up in here. No, nah, that was fun. That okay. was a great that was a great chat. So it was. Thanks, Corey. You're awesome, man. Okay, so let's talk about the basics, how people get a hold of us. I think we have a couple new reviews. Yeah. All we, that good stuff. Yeah, we've got some reviews for on a Apple podcast. Sweet. I'll, I'll read one. This one's from Jeff E2. Okay. Jeff says, Great show. Five stars. This podcast is exactly what I was looking for. During the Could It Be podcast, there were snippets of their experiences with treasure hunting books that got me hooked. Very inspirational. Great guest. What a fantastic show. Boom. Goes the dynamite. Hey, she didn't even read that and she just knew what to say because that is like one of our little catchphrases off of uh, our Could It Be an Oak Island podcast well, podcast. Because you use boom as a filler word. Who uses that as a filler word? Boom. Boom. Goes the dynamite. Like, <laughs> unless I say it, you don't realize you're doing it. Yeah, but you haven't been saying it on boots and armchairs. I know. That's And that's probably fine. That could be a, a could it be an Oak Island podcast thing. Okay. Well, All sharing right, hey, is caring. Jeff, thanks for the review. Yes. Man. Thank we you, really Jeff. We really that. appreciate that. Yeah. If, it, if you guys want to leave us a review, uh, please feel free to do so. You can go to Apple Podcasts and, and do that. That's probably the best thing you can do to help us bring a little bit of awareness to our podcast. Yep. That and tell a friend. Yes, tell friends. If you want to be like Jeff, you too can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, right? Right. You can even go to our Facebook page and leave us a review there. And it helps people be able to find us. Say what? What? The best way that you can do that is probably do it with the review or... Tell a friend. We just want to say thanks again. Our fans are great. Our fans, of course they're great. They're the best. Uh, there is one other thing I want to touch on before we really wrap everything up. We've got some new articles coming out to Mysterious Writings this week where we chat about some cool theories regarding the secret. Fun. So keep your eyes peeled for those articles. And we'll be posting them probably pretty much everywhere, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> into our The Secret groups, into our Boots and Armchairs group. So, yeah, go go take a look at that. Like we mentioned at the top of the show, our whole theory concerning the shadows for The Secret is all in a really big article, and it's laid out a lot more elegantly than what they were able to show on the show, right? It's, Definitely. Please go take a look at that because it explains so much and why we wanted to do what we wanted to do and why they believed in us so much. I totally agree. You heard Josh. He said, I believe in their theory. <laughs> right after we get done with the three stages of secret, <laughs> was it secret grief? grief? Yeah. <laughs> hey, but it was fun. Hey, I'm in total madness. That's fine. Yeah, well, I have been guaranteed since the show came out. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it is finally time to wrap up, unless you had anything else. Nope. Uh, I think we should just go ahead and let our listeners know how to get a hold of us in case they want to share some feedback or, most importantly, tell us what you want to hear about. Yeah, we need we need some recommendations on the next treasure hunts that we tackle on the show that aren't the secret. We've been kind of wrapped up in the secret for a while, but we need to get back to uh, some other cool and interesting treasure hunts that uh, we need to learn more about. And we want to we want to share those hunts with you guys. How do they get a hold of us? They could go to Facebook and Instagram. I believe those are the same handles, right? Yep, at Boots and Armchairs. And I know they can email us at Boots and Armchairs at gmail.com correct they can also find us on twitter at treasure hunt 
pod. That's us. That is. And lastly, we have a phone number where you can leave a message, which is 360-836-4447. Yeah, call that number, leave us a voicemail, and we might discuss it on the air, unless it's like mean. (laughs) <laughs> don't nah, be mean don't be mean we won't share mean stuff yeah. i really want and i hope some of our listeners call in and leave us some hilarious treasure hunting stories oh yeah that's something she's been dying oh to hear. my gosh i've been dying to hear because we have hilarious stories from treasure hunting i for some reason really want to put this compilation together of people's crazy hilarious treasure hunting stories or experiences yeah what have you done while you've been out looking for forrest fenn's treasure yes what what have you done when you're digging a hole for the secret come on there's there's stories behind those holes there's stories behind those treks across the wilderness and i'm sure some of them are pretty funny well what about nick that was on here and telling us about the alligators uh, <laughs> chomping away that's some scary stuff. Yeah, Nick Spira, man. That, that is a pretty good story. I'm sure we have lots of listeners that have all sorts of crazy stuff like that. So it we would... want to hear it. Yep. Before we go too far down that rabbit hole, let's say goodbye to our listeners. Goodbye, listeners. I hope you have a wonderful week. And until then... This has been Boots and Armchairs. A Treasure Hunters podcast. Boom. found the breakfast tea and bourbon treasure i found you it's pretty important <laughs> it's pretty to me good. too do we get take it or leave it it's it's it, a, it, it's, it's a, 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 it's a, a, a. <laughs>